Currently, large language model has a major limitation. It lacks memory. Models are trained on finite data sets and have small context windows. This restricts their ability to maintain long conversations or reason over large documents. A new system called MemGPT aims to give AI memory. It manages memory automatically via function calls, telling the AI to store or retrieve information. This mimics how computer operating systems handle memory, with a fast main context like RAM, and unlimited slow external context, like a hard drive. MemGPT was tested on chatbots and document search. For chatbots, it maintained conversation coherence and personalized responses by referencing past dialogue. For document search, it achieved high accuracy regardless of the number of texts. In today's video, I'm going to be looking at an exciting new paper from UC Berkeley called MemGPT towards LLMs as operating systems. This introduces a really clever technique to give AI models essentially unlimited memory, which could be a huge breakthrough. And I will also show you installation process. I'll give you an overview of how MemGPT works, share some examples, and then walk through the key results. Stick around to the end because we'll take a look at the actual code the authors shared as well. First, let's talk about why memory is such a big issue for AI right now. Current models like GPT-3 or Google's Lambda have what's called a fixed context window. This means they can only look at a certain number of words of context at a time. For example, GPT-3 has a context length of about 2,000 words. Anything before that is forgotten or summarized. This makes it really hard for AI to have long, coherent conversations or reason about large documents. The context window fills up fast. Researchers have tried just making the window bigger, like Claude, which has 100,000 words. But that's expensive and still not enough for many applications. This new system called MemGPT solves the problem in a creative way. Instead of just a fixed window, it gives AI multiple memory stores, like a computer, short-term memory, Android context window, fast access, long-term memory, unlimited size but slower. It can automatically move data between these stores. Writing facts, it learns to long-term memory. This lets it keep conversing naturally forever. The authors took inspiration from how operating systems manage memory and run programs. MemGPT is like an OS just for managing the AI's memory. Let's see some examples so you can really understand how MemGPT works. For chatbots, when chatting with a user called Sam, MemGPT could save their birthday to long-term memory. Later, it can pull this out to personalize the conversation and remind Sam it knows their birthday. For reading documents, MemGPT can split long texts into chunks in its long-term memory. When answering questions, it can pull in the relevant chunks to reference instead of forgetting parts. The AI learns to move data around itself using special commands called function calls, like store underscore fact or retrieve underscore document. Now this next part is super cool. It's how MemGPT actually manages its own memory. So get this, the AI is controlling itself. Mind blown, right? MemGPT does this through what's called self-directed editing and retrieval. Basically, the AI decides on its own when to move information between the short-term and long-term memory. It's like AI autopilot. Let me give you an example. Let's say MemGPT is chatting with a user named Sarah. Sarah mentions she likes Taylor Swift. MemGPT realizes, oh, that's an important fact about Sarah. I should save that in long-term memory in case she brings up music again. So all on its own, MemGPT will make a function call, which is kind of like pressing a button in its mind that saves Sarah likes Taylor Swift into its long-term memory. Later, MemGPT can search through its long-term memory and be like, ah, yes, I remember now Sarah likes Taylor Swift and reference that to keep the conversation natural. The authors were able to get MemGPT to do this by giving it special instructions up front explaining how its memory works and what functions it can call to access or edit the memory. It's following those instructions to manage its memory all on its own. How cool is that? The AI is controlling itself. This is such a smart design. By making the memory management self-directed, MemGPT can keep learning and evolving during a conversation instead of just filling up its short-term context. So in MemGPT, anytime the user sends a message, that's called an event. Events trigger the AI to start processing. Processing means the AI runs its neural network brains to generate a response. This is when it's actually thinking. Now sometimes the AI needs to do multiple memory actions before it can respond. For example, it might need to retrieve a document, read part of it, store some facts, retrieve a different document, read another part. That's a lot of steps. 
This is where function chaining comes in clutch. Function chaining lets memgpt execute multiple functions in a sequence before responding. It's like connecting together a chain of logic before replying to the user. Now we're getting into the good stuff, seeing memgpt in action. The researchers tested memgpt on some real-world tasks to see how it handles long conversations. This is so important for chatbots and voice assistants that are meant to have natural back and forths with humans. Current chatbots struggle to maintain context because their memory windows are so small. After just a few dozen messages, they totally forget what you talked about earlier. So annoying. MemGPT to the rescue. Its expandable memory let it keep conversations going smoothly. The researchers looked at two criteria. Consistency. Could MemGPT stay consistent with facts from earlier in the chat? Engagement. Could MemGPT make chats more engaging by personalizing responses? Let's see how it did. For consistency, the researchers gave MemGPT a question that required it to recall details from previous messages. MemGPT aced this test by pulling the answers from its long-term memory. Fixed window chatbots got way more confused on these questions. Their teeny tiny memories didn't have the details anymore. For engagement, MemGPT kicked butt again. It greeted users by referencing personal facts it remembered about them from earlier. The fixed window chatbots fell flat with generic hello openers. Boring! So MemGPT passed both tests with flying colors. The expandable memory let it keep chats consistent and engaging over way more messages than normal chatbots could handle. In my opinion, this is a huge deal. MemGPT could make chatbots and voice assistants way more usable. I don't know about you all, but I can't wait to have natural conversations with AI. Now let's see how we can install memory GPT on our PC. Let's go to their GitHub page and clone the GitHub repository. It will take some time to download the GitHub repository. Then, create a Python virtual environment and activate it. After that, create your own OpenAI API key and set environment variables using the set command. Once you've set your API key, you're all set. To run this, simply execute the main file and it should work perfectly. If you want to use a local file as an archive memory, you can do that as well. Here's the command. We can retrieve information from our local storage and also store information. Let's ask about Sam's gender. We can see that Sam doesn't recognize themselves as male or female. Let's see what memory GPT gives us as a response. Wow, it gives the correct answer. Now, let's see if we can store information. I'm going to ask if you can remember Sam's birthday. Let's provide a random birth date. And now, if I ask for the same birthday date, here is our answer, and it is correct. This MemGPT paper shows that creatively managing memory, not just having more of it, is key to overcoming current limits. While still early research, I think these OS-inspired techniques could really unlock the next level of intelligent algorithms. Let me know in the comments what AI papers you want me to cover next. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.